Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. At least Erev Tov for those of you in the United States. It is, should be Bolkia Tov for me here in uh, Eastern Europe. It's already in the wee hours of the morning here. Could not go to bed, guys. Some very disturbing news is happening all across uh, the world. In fact, uh, one thing, just let me just quickly, a little uh, thought that caught my eye here it was an engine that exploded here on a uh, Southwest Boeing 737 falls to pieces after in-flight explosion. Uh, this was a plane leaving New Orleans. It did land an emergency landing at Pensacola Airport. Um, one I've flown out quite a bit because uh, that's the region of the country I'm actually uh, originally from or nearby it, uh, raised in southern Alabama and northwest Florida. But uh, yeah, that was very disturbing to see. That also reminded me of Gary Skogibo, a good friend of mine that actually got a Presidential Congressional Medal for, uh, or I don't know if that's the right type of medal he got, because he landed. The only time in history where a plane's engine was totally ripped off of a plane and landed it safely, keeping all of his passengers safe. Well, this plane also landed with some 90-something people on board. They were all safe. Uh, and, no other problems. I'm sure though it was very frightening for the people to see that happen and only worried that something worse could happen. But they did very well with that. Now let's get right into some more of the serious things that are going on. Um, and that is, uh, let me just see if I can get the right things up here for you. Um, one, oh goodness guys, let's, let's, let's see which side we go for. Rockets hit airport in Turkey's southeast uh, Southeast reports. I'm sure they're going to blame it on the Kurds uh, naturally, and I can understand if the Kurds did do it because uh, we already know that the Turks have crossed over into Syria, uh, claiming that they're trying to take out ISIS in the uh, neighboring town, but they're not. They have been shelling and trying to wipe out the Kurds in that region of the world there. Seems like the Kurds just gets really thrown under the bus. Uh, you know, Russia says that they're good people, great fighters there. Uh, they're the only ones that are fighting against ISIS. Uh, but yet, when it comes to Turkey, attacking them does nothing about it. The United States at one time justified going into Iraq because of the Kurds and genocides uh, from uh, the Iraqi side there. But again, nothing is done about it. Uh, so, you know, that's probably what's going to be happening here. It's probably going to be retaliation from the Kurds, perhaps, maybe even ISIS, but a rocket does land in Turkish uh, airport. It is an ongoing thing. I don't know anything else about it as of yet. Let's just see if anything has been updated on it. Uh, not really much of anything at this point here. Another disturbing news as well, and this is going to be the issue that's going on about these tanks that we brought up uh, yesterday, the Abram tanks. I see that uh, Paul Begley has noted that it is 100 tanks, according to Intel, that he has on the streets uh, there of Germany that is speaking about it. Um, and there was something, though, that I wanted to bring up to you guys' attention there from a good friend of mine that has actually spoke about this. Um, and let me just find that for you here. Um, uh, and, and I have confirmed this as well uh, with some of my own family members there that, are, that, are, that, have, that have been in the military, uh, army, in fact. The Abram Tanks, uh, a dear brother of ours from Belgium, said to me, did you notice all the razor ribbon? that is on board those tanks there. It's a very disturbing situation to see that much razor ribbon. He said, these tanks are going out to engage. Uh, it could be, and he noted, and as well as some of my family have also noted to me as well, it could be for an exercise. But they said with that type of setup, more than likely it's not gonna just be an exercise. They're going to prepare to defend something uh, or to set up a perimeter. Uh, but you don't normally run around with razor ribbon, at least the amount that they had on these Abram tanks packed on these tanks for just no reason at all. That's infantry that normally takes care of the razor ribbon, setting up perimeters, etc. Um, but it looks like here that this could be for another purpose altogether. It just lets us know that these tanks are going into a possible combat mission. Uh, or the possibility of that. Now, keeping that in mind, Russia kicks off a major combat readiness check, according to Sputnik News there. We already talked about how they launched out about two dozen ships. Now, there are there is some 
indication in Russian news that the higher command of Russia has been moved to another part of the country there into bunkers. Um, it is expected that Russia is expecting some type of attack. Uh, the, the Russian media is reporting that Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration is really antsy for war. Uh, they're really at the point now to where if they don't get a war going soon, Donald Trump will win the election and it will totally mess up everything. And they say that what would be worse is if Donald Trump becomes president, they all end up in prison as a result. Uh, now, I don't go that deep into the politics side of it, but I do know that there's a lot of issues when it comes down to that. And I have also been watching as I've seen the dangerous moves that the U.S. military is making under the Obama administration under his command. And in fact, today, I don't have it up in front of me because I didn't get a chance to put all this news together. It's kind of a, a rush deal here when I begin to see start, things start uh, shaping up here. But uh, I found an article coming out of South Korea where the Korean people, a huge number of Korean people were protesting the United States military exercises in front of the U.S. Embassy. They were protesting these exercises and they were calling it a provocation to North Korea. Now, it's nothing unusual to see protests when these things go on. It would happen anywhere in the world. Everybody protests war. No, you know, nobody wants it. I understand that. Uh, and I wished, uh, let me just see if I have that up here anywhere. I don't see it right up, right, right, uh, right off the top of, uh, head. oh, you know what? I, I can get it for you real quick though, because I think I did load it on Facebook on Israeli news live on Facebook. So let me just quickly jump over there for you guys. This is important to see because I want you to see the picture and here it is right here. Uh, let me just click on the actual link to this. Um, because you're going to see in the picture that's done on this article here, um, it's, it's the age of the people. South Korea provoked North Korea with a large military, or excuse me, let me, let me back the size down so you can see that a little bit better. U.S. South Korea provoked North Korea with large military drills. Now, here's the thing, guys. I want you to look on your screen at these people that are in this protest here. All right? Let's get a good look at this, guys. These people here, this is not like young protesters in America or like we were here at the Czech Republic the other day and you got all the rowdy people all angry and stuff. If you will notice, with the exception of maybe this young person right here, these people, the women, the men, these are all people that are old enough to have lived during the Korean War. Uh, or at least maybe as children or something of that sort there. Perhaps maybe even fought in the Korean War to begin with, where North and South Korea were fighting with each other. Um, I don't really know, but they're elderly people. And they're claiming, they're protesting, that they don't want a provocation by the U.S. military to provoke North Korea. Now, <clears throat> With that saying, let me just say this here. I, I know that Pyongyang, Kim, Kim Jong-un, has clearly been very provocative on his own. All right, So I'm not here to make Kim Jong-un look like some great guy. He's not. The guy's threatening, threatening nuclear weapons on the United States, threatens it on South Korea. He threatens it on everybody. So this guy is definitely no good guy whatsoever. But then again, you got to keep in mind Let's, let's just be objective for a moment and step back. What's really going on? Why is this guy always threatening the United States? Well, they do do these drills every single year. And this particular drill here, I made a report earlier today that, yes, the U.S. is provoking this. I mean, they go, they take their military troops and they go inside the demilitarization zone. All right, you know, it's one thing to do the drills. I'm not against them doing the drills myself. I understand. The U.S. has got to do drills. You want to stay active. You want to work with the different forces. I have no problem with doing drills. But, you know, that is very provocative when you're going into an area where North and South Korea, with the United States, made an agreement after the war that would be a demilitarization zone, 
militaries are not supposed to go in there. It's just supposed to be, okay, you know, like, let's just stay hands off here. But no, the U.S. government intentionally is going in there. And I cannot help but think, and I say this, guys, in light of, not for the fact of, you know, saying that Kim Jong-un is a good guy, but it's the fact that it seems that the Obama administration is grabbing for straws, looking for something to get a conflict going. Because why? Wars are great for paying off debt. And that's why they want this war. The banks are falling under right now. They're not doing very well. Look at the U.S. banks. Of course, they've always up and down, up and down. The, the German banks are really taking a beating now, and I think it's because of the refugee crisis. Or maybe they're going to blame the refugee crisis on it. Not really sure. But I'm seeing that. We saw the other day, broke the news about all these tanks being loaded up onto rail cars being sent there to uh, uh, somewhere, don't really know where. Uh, I don't know if it's near Ukraine, which could be. Uh, I do have somewhere on one of my screens right here where Russia uh, has, um, maybe I don't have it on the screen here, guys, but Russia has got, uh, uh, has moved tanks to their, to the border of Ukraine within 30 miles of the border of Ukraine. I don't have that up here now. I've been going through so many files here. But they've moved up 30 tanks to the border of Ukraine. They're supposedly unmarked tanks. Now this is coming from the West, so we don't know if it's propaganda telling the truth or whatever the, you know, whatever the deal may be about it. Um, also, additional troops have departed from Edmonton for Eastern Europe deployment. Uh, Canadian forces personnel have been in Eastern and Central Europe uh, since 2014 are providing support to NATO assurance. May be part of the rotation. Hey, I, I don't know, but the thing is, is this happening, okay? Uh, the other thing was, too, was uh, this was an interesting article. This is from the U UK, no doubt, uh, okay, from the telegraph.co.uk. This article written here by Christopher B uh, uh, Booker. Thanks to the EU's bungling, Russia will inevitably win in Ukraine. Can there have been any greater international drama in which Western politicians have, have more completely stood, real, re, excuse me, Western politicians have more completely stood reality on its head than the in, in, unending crisis over Ukraine, which is yet again creeping back into the headlines. There was only ever, excuse me, there was only ever one reason why the tragedy tearing Ukraine apart first erupted as it did in the winter of 2013-2014. The hubristic itch of the EU backed by the United States to absorb Ukraine into its own ever-enlarging empire. Now, this is a guy from Great Britain writing the article. This isn't Steve De Stephen Benoon writing it. This is a guy from Britain writing it. For this, the West was happy to see an elected pro-Russian Ukrainian president ousted in a coup d'etat by an unelected stooge favorable to the EU. It was wholly predictable that Russian speakers of Crimea and Eastern Ukraine would prefer to be ruled by their fellow Russians in Moscow rather than by some weird form of government in a faraway Brussels that didn't begin to understand. <clears throat> it was dangerously crazy of the West to react as it did with John Kerry, the U.S. Secretary of State, describing Crimea's vote to rejoin Russia as an in incredible act of aggression, with Prince Charles comparing Putin to Hitler and the EU's ludicrous little foreign minister as the time Baroness Ashton being cheered in Kiev by 200,000 Ukrainians shouting Europe, Europe, many of whom had been paid by Brussels to do so. Now, let me just show you something here. The guy here in the article states that, that the 200,000, many of them were paid by Brussels to do so. We did a story on this when all this was breaking, even when I saw the unarmed men dying in the streets. And a good friend of mine, he's a Western Ukraine. He is not pro-Russian whatsoever. His brother there lost a lot of business. He said, in fact, my brother would go and kill everybody in Crimea if he could because of all the business he lost as a result of this, all right? So this is not coming from a pro-Russian side whatsoever. But when the conflict first started and I saw all these innocent people being shot down and killed, I called him up and I asked him, Sergey, why is this happening? And he told me, they're being paid. And I said, are you 
are you serious? Is this really happening? These, you, these Western Ukrainians are being paid to do this? He said, yes. And the church was involved in it. Imagine that. Not the Russian Orthodox Church, mind you. But they were involved in paying these people to go out and protest. Now, this guy is saying that, that Brussels was paying some 200,000 Ukrainians to go out there and protest and shout cheers. So after nearly three years of civil war that has already left 9,000 dead, the leaders of the West remain as uh, hu excuse me, humiliating, humili humiliatingly important as ever over how to respond to the shambles they did more than anyone else to create. The only way this impasse will ever be resolved is by Eastern Ukraine rejoining Russia and President Vladimir Putin uh, can wait with this uh, in, in, excuse me, inscrutable smile, confident that one way or another, that is what will one day come about. All right? So without going into the rest of the article here, the thing is, is we're not the only guys here from a Western perspective that realize the things that are going on in Ukraine did not start with Russia. As much as they're trying to bring in all the propaganda, and they're really trying to bring the propaganda in now, making it look like Putin did, especially with people like myself and guys like Christopher Booker here, who are actually telling you the truth of what's really going on in Ukraine. Uh, that aside doesn't mean that the people in eastern Ukraine are, are any better than the people in the western Ukraine. It, it, there's, there's no doubt propaganda on both sides, but as we stated in one of, or even titled one of our videos regarding U Ukraine, uh, if, the, if the war is launched by Kiev on eastern Ukraine, it will be a war against civilians. Uh, now, naturally, there are fighters there as well. I don't just say that there's not fighters. Uh, sure there is. Uh, will Russia come to their aid? I do believe that Putin will come to their aid on this time around. And I think this may have a big to do with why these uh, 100 plus Abram tanks are on the move with all this razor ribbon. Uh, it looks like we may end up in a very serious war, not to mention Syria also. It is really boiling into a major confrontational place to be right now. Uh, it is looking like that war could break out in Syria as well, and it may not go that well, guys. So I, I see in so many different areas, and, I, and again, uh, I see very much the provocation from the United States, even with Syria. You know, one, they go in there and they build a base in the country that they have no permission to build the base in. We, we do it as an occupier. Uh, Russia was invited by Bashar al-Assad to come there and to help give him permission to build his bases there in order to help the Syrian people to, to, to throw out ISIS. At the same time, Russia trying to keep from ending up into a war with the United States and NATO, uh, U.S. says to them, don't bomb the moderate rebels. But he's there to protect Bashar al-Assad, but he's told not to bomb the rebels that are fighting against Assad. Uh, of course, Russia doesn't always comply to every American demand. Uh, and then, of course, the United States puts their own troops in there. Now, when Russia bombed and nearly took out some of the American soldiers that were there, that did cause some major tensions at that point. Um, as far as I know, no Americans were killed, but they're quick to show that they'd shoot down any kind of Syrian jets that are in that area. And, of course, there is some talk that they're, gonna, they're wanting to shoot down more of the Russians. Anything to get a war going is what it seems to be coming from Obama and the Hillary regime that is in the United States. You know, it's funny. I don't normally get into this politi political thing too much when it comes to Donald Trump and, and Hillary Clinton. But one thing's for sure. We know already, even from Putin's own words himself, if Hillary becomes president, we're going to war. Uh, and I think that's exactly what they want. But maybe what Obama's looking at, well, we're going to go to war to make sure Hillary becomes president. That's not good. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. Sorry, guys, for this all being chopped up and everything. I wanted to get some of this information out to you because I, I feel like it's vital. I feel like that we're being pressed to a war. Um, and I just don't know how to turn it around. Except expose as much as we can. Shalom. Thank you.